Hey, what's going on guys? I hope everybody has had a great day so far. It's the evening for me. I'm kind of fighting against uh, the sun here. I want to get outside and get working, but what we're going to do today is something a little bit different. I'm going to be making an ecosphere, a closed aquatic environment inside of a mason jar. I know some of you probably aren't into that, um, but I think it could be kind of a cool project. And what I'm going to use for this ecosphere might be something that you're interested in. I know a lot of you guys are just waiting for the update on the desert tank that we set up. If you didn't see that video, I'll put a link for it in the description. Pretty fun build, a lot of you guys were into that. Um, but you know, that's, that's coming. We'll get to that as soon as the livestock shows up, which is coming soon. So here we have a few different jars. I got a bunch of them. Oh God, don't fall over. Let's see, where's our last one? Where's our last one? Where are you, dude? There we go, that little guy. Okay, so we have four different jars here, and I think what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna use this big one because I wanna kind of do a little bit of planting in it, and I don't see myself being able to get into this one very well. Well, I could, but especially not this one. So we're gonna take this jar and use this as our ecosphere, our little closed environment. I think this one's gonna be really good because it has the latch seal. I don't think mason jars by themselves create an airtight seal unless you like heat them up or put them in the oven or, or something like that. So I think this is gonna be really good. Let's go ahead and take this outside and get the materials for our ecosphere. I hope the weed whacker isn't too distracting guys, but check this out. So here we have a couple of ponds that I did last year. This one was Laguigia. I don't know if it was Palustris or if it was Repens, but you can see it's still intact. All of these stems still viable. I definitely want to use some of that. We have no aquatic plants in here other than these random weeds that decided they wanted to grow in here. And then we have one of Dwarf Sag over here, okay? So the first thing we need for our ecosphere is some soil. We want to get some some material down here. This is just sand and soil. So let's see if we can grab a handful. It's gonna have a lot of roots in it. Cool. Oh, this is gonna be messy. Boom. Okay. Those are some tall pieces. I might cut these. Maybe I don't need to plant it. Let's grab some more soil. Got a good spot here. There we go. I'm just kind of layering it in. Trying not to cover up all of these plants. And if, maybe I won't even, I was originally gonna take some cuttings and then plant them, but I might be able to just get away with, with this. Plant this one in here a little bit. There we go. So we got a few stems in there. It's kind of hard to see, but we have a decent amount of soil in there. Now I'm just gonna fill this whole thing up with water from this pond. Might need a scooper. That is turbid. So we got a little bit of airspace up here. I think that's all that I want. Let's go ahead and seal this thing up. Okay, come on, buddy. There we go. Good morning, everybody. Let's check out our ecosphere 12 hours later after we filled it up. Okay, so it was really, really muddy. I waited for three or four hours, nothing settled out, so I had to go outside and kind of refill it pick up some water from the other side of the pond that was clearer, um, and now here we are the next morning to take a look at our little system here. So I tried to set it up where we have the most light possible. You see I put the flashlight up here um, to try and illuminate the jar a little bit better. It's kind of tough to see, but there are areas, right, right when we zoom in here, we can get 
the camera to pick up some more light. So anyway, let's talk about this thing. So we have a couple inches of the substrate and that is uh, soil and concrete sand, which made up the substrate of the pond that grew this Laguigia last year. There's also some oak leaves and other, you know, random materials in this thing besides just the plants and the substrate, but that's cool, that's what we want. Um, and then, you know, nothing is in order here. We see there's a root system that's just kind of hanging out there, out of place, but that's fine. We're gonna leave it as is and let this thing just do its thing. I have spotted some life in here, so if we look a little bit closer, we can see that there are snails populating the ecosphere, more than a few. And there's also some small crustaceans. I don't know what they are, but if we look around here, we can see them swimming. They're hard to pick up. I think you can see that one there. Let's see if he comes over here to the right. There we go. There's also white worms in here. Not sure if that's actually what they're referred to as, but they were just short white worms that were, I don't know, about a half an inch long. So that was kind of interesting. We'll see if those stick around or not. I mean, that kind of goes for all of the organisms in this thing at the moment, right? So they're used to the environment that they were in. This environment is obviously going to be different uh, with the hopes that it can sustain their lives though. That's the whole point of what we're doing here. This is my second favorite mug design, the rainbow fish mug. It's like huge rainbow fish too, guys. If you don't have one of these yet, I'll put a link for it down in the description. Some of you guys might be into that. I'm a big coffee drinker. But any, anyway, but let's talk about how this whole system works, right? Like it's sealed so there's nothing new coming in and nothing old coming out. So how, how does it work? Well, the idea behind it is that we have hopefully created a self-sustaining ecosystem, meaning that all the necessary components for creating and sustaining life are maintained in this system. There's a lot going on in here, but sort of the main systems that we're concerned with are the consumption and production of CO2 and oxygen. And so a lot of that is produced and consumed via um, respiration down in the substrate by a multitude of microorganisms that all work together to create the cycle, okay? The plants in here and hopefully the algae at some point when that shows up will produce oxygen that'll feed the respiration and the breakdown of organics down here that produces the CO2 that those photosynthetic organisms need to continue and perpetuate the cycle. And we just hope that it's enough to support the higher organisms in here being um, the snails and the small crustaceans, the worms, etc. I guess my only hang up so far on this thing is that the water isn't super clear, even though I did flush it out and get some, you know, some clearer water in it. Um, I don't know, again, it's only been 12 hours. Maybe the sediment that's in here is just gonna take longer to settle out. Maybe the process of maturation will aid in the water be getting clearer. I, you know, I don't know, this is my first one. So there are definitely some channels that you should check out if you're into this sort of thing. I'm very new to it, um, but those channels will be linked down in the description. Serpent Design and Dustin Pack are two channels that I can think of off the top of my head that do this sort of thing, um, as well as Terrarium Ecosystems, but their whole theme is um, using jars, or a lot of it is, and I just think it's pretty cool. So check those guys out if you wanna get some more expert opinion on this kind of thing. I'm gonna go find a good windowsill for this. I think behind my couch, I'll tuck it back behind the curtains and just kind of like forget about it for a couple weeks and then we'll do an update on it. I think that's probably the best way to do it because I don't know, if it's, if it's out in the open, I'm gonna be looking at it every day and then I'm not gonna see a big change. So I'm just gonna take some pictures and kind of hide it in an adequate spot where it can get enough sunlight and then revisit it later and hopefully be surprised by what's going on in it. I think I'm definitely gonna make another one of these, but maybe try and scape it a little bit better. Like, this being my first one, I kinda wanted to do it as el natural as possible, you know, just kinda throw everything in there. But I think, I think I'm gonna do another one and try and scape it and make it look cool. I don't know, does that sound at all interesting? Let me know down in the comments below. Let me know if you think this is cool at all. Like, should I even do another one? Should I go to this local pond that I have in mind and sample that ecosystem and see what I can do? Like, I don't know. 
it sounds kind of fun to me, but in the end, you know, if you guys aren't that into it, then we can focus back onto, uh, onto what I know you guys are into. So let me know down in the comments below. All right, guys, here's your treat for sitting through the video. A look at the desert tank. It's morning, running the 24 seven mode on this thing. And I think that's been the best way to do it because I get all the different color variations of the tank and these rocks and everything in the tank just looked really good with this color temperature on it. So anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. We'll get back to this tank soon uh, in the next couple of days. Hopefully if you're new, don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell so you know when I upload the next video and don't forget to check out all the links down in the description for the mugs, t-shirts, everything. It helps so much guys. We'll see you next time.